Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live 5, brought to you by Doan Studios. I'm Kennerly Benrati, Development Officer here at, at Doan University. I work in the Advancement Office, and today our special guest is Dr. Jay Gilbert. Thank you for coming on the show, Dr. Gilbert. Thank you, Kennerly. Good to be here. Yes, yes, yes. So I do, first and foremost, want to kick things off. Live 5 is um, it's, it's a production intended to give you an inside look at just kind of who works here, what do they do, and um, kind of what's their daily day-to-day -day like. Um, you as incoming students, maybe if you're watching or if you're, maybe you're already a student, maybe you, know, you are a parent or an alum, uh, it gives you an inside look at just some of the people that are uh, well-known around this campus that you might interact with day-to-day. Uh, so with that being said, we are practicing all social distancing measures. Um, our crew offset has their mask on. We're doing everything we need to do um, because wellness and safety is the most important thing. Now, with that being said, we're going to get right into the show. Dr. Gilbert, free, feel free to talk a little bit about yourself. Um, kind of, you know, you are the band director, correct? Or do you have a greater title than that? Just the band director. Just the band director, right. and you've been at Doan for? This is my 27th year at Doan. Wow. And so um, I came in 93, yeah. and uh, prior to that I had taught in Texas yeah. at Baylor University. I was the marching band director at Baylor, and I went to uh, Wisconsin. I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. Went to the University of Wisconsin, so I was a Badger. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a four-letter word here in uh, Nebraska <laughs> sometimes. And uh, then I went to Northwestern, another Big Ten school in Chicago. Yeah. And, uh, Got a doctorate there. Uh, came here in 93, and uh, I thought I might be here for two years, but this is such a great school. Yeah. And I really think I have one of the very best jobs at Doan because I've, I have my feet in really three, three, um, three things yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. I'm able to do the artistic, musical side. I really enjoy concert band music, and uh, we have a good concert band here. I enjoy my ceremonial uh, life. We. Yeah. I get to play for commencement and opening con and yeah. uh, inaugurations and all kinds of ceremonies. And we get to have a pep band at the football games. Yeah. And that's fun, too, to be there and to sort of uh, think that you are involved in uh, getting the spirit up for those particular right. events. Right. Well, Dr. Gilbert, I will say, you know, you're a stalwart here at Doan, I guess, if that's the right word to use. I'm not sure what that word even really means, but I used it. Uh, I know you're, you're a staple in the Doan community, and it's been a pleasure. I know uh, during my four years here, the pep band uh, at the football games, you know, it added that rah-rah, you know, while, you know, you had a crazy like me down on one end saying all the types of things you need to say to the other team so that you're getting their head and then you got the band playing. It was always a great time uh, and the concerts, always great. Um, so with, I, I, I appreciate it. So I will be the first one to say, well, I don't know if I'm the first, but I'll say it right here. Thank you for your service and your time here at Doan. We greatly appreciate you. Um, so we'll talk about this uh, upcoming year, right? There might, I, I'm thinking there might be a, a little bit of a change the way things happen this fall. So, so what does band and music look like this fall uh, with uh, kind of, you know, students having to adjust a little bit with the ongoing COVID-19? Yeah, great question, Kennerly. Yeah. So uh, COVID is really having a, an effect yeah. on what's going to happen in, uh, in music. Right. Uh, maybe you are aware that in the, in the spring, when COVID was uh, ramping up, uh, some choirs in the United States did some singing, and uh, one of those choirs in Washington had a rehearsal of, of uh, 85 people, and 45 of them were sick yeah. after one rehearsal. Wow. And, and I think it was two people died as a result of their exposure wow. in that. So the music world has been trying to study the effects mm -hmm. of uh, playing an instrument or singing Mm -hmm. on aerosolization. In other words, what kind of aerosol comes out of your right. singing or your playing? Mm -hmm. And we are putting those measures into place at Doan. So the first thing that will probably surprise you is that I believe Dr. Rundstad and I are planning to have students, when we are singing together or playing, we will be wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And for the band instruments, I bought a set of masks for the band. We're going to cut a slit in those masks mm -hmm. so they can put their mouthpiece or um, or the uh, instrument into their, their mouth inside their mask mm. so that they're not breathing in the material. Mm. And then um, we are going to, in the, in the band room, in the choir room, we are going to limit our exposure in those rooms because the research, the current research, which was actually done this month, shows that 
a long-term exposure longer than 30 minutes significantly increases your risk of exposure. Hmm. So we're going to start our large groups outside in the Castle Outdoor Theater. Oh, wow. And we're going to spread everybody out six foot distance, yeah. and we're going to prepare for a concert on the weekend of October 10 and 11. Yeah. On Saturday, we are hoping to play at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and if it just happens to be raining or maybe even snowing, we'll do the concert on Sunday at 2 o'clock. Awesome. And um, that concert will feature all of our groups yeah. so that people can come to that concert. We'll spread chairs out, yeah. socially distance, yeah. uh, try to keep people in their germ pools there, <laughs> and, uh, and let everyone hear the concert we're doing. Yeah. I think Dr. Rinnestad is planning on doing half a dozen pieces. Mm -hmm. I'm planning on doing three. And our good friend and colleague, Matt First, has composed special music wow. for us to prepare. And I'm I'm going looking forward to working on that. He is a world class composer, yeah. and so it'll be interesting to see if we can actually play uh, that music at a high level <laughs> yeah. in the six weeks that we have. Yeah. Then, as you know, the semester we've we bumped the semester up. Yeah. So regrettably, we're not going to be able to do the Christmas concert this year. Okay. okay. But uh, after that October 10th concert. We're thinking that we're going to move to smaller ensembles. Okay. And we're going to, I'm buying for everybody in band a special program called Smart Music, mm. where they can actually play along to some of the great literature that we have mm. by setting it up on their computer and it's hooked into a microphone. Yeah. And then, so they'll play along with that mm. and, um, and we'll have a chance to perform that. Right. Now, with regard to the pep band, right. I just talked to Matt Franzen. Uh, what a great guy he is. And he has invited us to be at the games and to sit in that south end zone awesome. so that we're not in the seating anymore, but we can spread out over the south end zone. There we go. So that we can uh, do the cheers yeah. and, and uh, play the school songs and, yeah. and be a part of the football games. That is awesome. So a little bit of adjusting, like everyone has, but like I said, I, I, I truthfully think with all the adjustments, new opportunity comes out of that, right? We have an opportunity to play outside and now, you know, people, normally students and people who would miss concerts, now there's no reason to miss the concert because guess what? You just walk by and there it is, right? Um, it's, it's awesome. Some of the technology, you guys have been able to kind of use that and help students play along with literature. And then we even figured it out, keep you there at the football game. You put them in the south end zone and they'll still be there getting on the other team's nerves. Exactly what we need. That is awesome. So um, what, what's new this year? Is there, is there anything new going on in the music department or other than what we just went over with COVID? But, you know, outside of COVID, are there any new and exciting things happening? Or That's a very good question. Um, you know, we're, we are moving, we are doing more te technological okay. things. Okay. And the reason that we're hesitant to plan anything, normally we have a January tour and a February right. tour. Right. Uh, I was supposed to take the band to Washington, D.C. Yes. for for a tour. I was going to come to that. I was, I was supposed oh. to follow you guys out there and put a little alumni event on, but you know. yeah. So really everything is really at this moment up in the air right. until we get a better idea of what's happening. And, uh, by the grace of God, when we get a vaccine right. that will right. help us to sort of move through this time of, right. of incredible risk yeah. and, uh, and know, know what to do when we're moving forward. So I suppose the innovations are that we're going to be uh, utilizing technology as best as we can. Yeah. And uh, but other than that, we want to try to make the experience as uh, authentic for the students as possible. Mm. And by authentic, I mean students really want to sing and play. They want to. It's yeah. like it's like football. Yeah. You really want to play football. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's one thing to play Madden. Right. But it's another thing to actually be playing <laughs> the game. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so we really want to try to give as much of that experience as we possibly can while keeping the students as safe as possible. Definitely. Definitely. So um, here's a good question. What is your favorite instrument and why is it a sousaphone? <laughs> well, that's a very good question. <laughs> Uh, my favorite instrument, the sousaphone. I, hadn't, I wouldn't have picked that myself, but <laughs> since you're suggesting that that's uh, my favorite instrument. Um, the sousaphone is a great instrument. Actually, it's interesting. It is the name of a person, John Philip Sousa, uh, uh, director of the Marine Band before he started his own band in 1893. Huh. And in 1893, that year, J.W. Pepper, mm. uh, an instrument maker, we know him as a sheet music salesman right now, but... Pepper was a major instrument maker in the late uh, 19th century, and Sousa asked him to design a, an instrument 
uh, a tuba that he could use in his band that projected the sound over the band. So the way they designed the instrument was to sit over the shoulder of the person with the bell pointing straight up and that bass sound spread over the entire group, mm -hmm. giving everyone a clear sense of the pulse mm -hmm. and giving a big bass definition to the sound. Well, then marching bands came out, and so instead of leaving the bell up, they turned the bell on its side. Huh. And uh, so that sound projected straight forward. And those instruments were made of metal, and they were very heavy, mm. 25 or 30 pounds, carrying that around for three or four hours. Right. Uh, that gets to be tiring. So the ones we bought at Doan are made of fiberglass. They mm. do have brass keywork, yeah. but uh, the, they're essentially fiberglass instruments. Wow. And so, um, so what did you want to know specifically about the <laughs> sousaphone uh, that I could uh, enlighten you on? So, uh, no. The, I'm, I'm reading. The, I'm, I, I just want to let everybody know I'm reading the uh, the teleprompter on this one because sousaphone. I wouldn't have picked the sousaphone either. But I'm really glad we we asked the sousaphone question now. Um, discuss a little bit about sousaphone culture of confidence. Um, you know, there's a there's a certain prestige to sousaphone players. Why is that? Why is that? There's a certain prestige <laughs> to playing the sousaphone. <laughs> Why? Why? Do you know what the definition of a gentleman is? That's a person who can play the sousaphone, sousaphone. but chooses not, not to. to. <laughs> right, right. Well, seriously, I guess the sousaphone culture is more of a cult than right. it is a culture. <laughs> right. It takes a special individual to play the sousaphone. Yeah. Right. And usually uh, people that are attracted to it are, you know, future Navy SEALs, <laughs> uh, future people who are sort of fearless. Yeah. Um, people who are not concerned about back injury later in life. Those, those kinds yeah. of people who love to eat pizza in mass quantities. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are good sousaphone players. That, I see. I and, see. And they do have an ego, and they do want to be heard. Yeah. Um, and at Doan, we've had a long history of sousaphone players who have sort of taken over the band when I'm not leading a piece of music. Oh, wow. Uh, I'll give you an example. Back in 2008, 9, 10, there was a player named Ben K. Skinner. Yeah. And uh, when there was a bad call on the field, he recited this long thing. I mean, by reciting, I mean he was shouting so the official could hear him. I respectfully disagree with the choice in, in call that you just made, which went against our team and was wrongly attributed to them. Something like that. So, um, yes, the sousaphone players really, they, they do add a lot of uh, spice yeah. to what we're doing in the stands. <laughs> well, that's great to know. So there you go. You have it, folks. Sousaphone players, just know... Um, we know who you are. Um, so we talk about your 27-year career at Doan. Um, what would you say has been the highlight of, of your career or the most memorable piece? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think really the highlight for me, and I mean this in all sincerity, is the fact that I get to work with really bright, really talented, impressive young people. Mm. You know, we're, we're joking about sousaphone players, but right. there, have been, there are really talented young people playing the sousaphone. Mm -hmm. And the joy is that we get to work with them, and we work with them every day. They come to class really wanting to be there, and uh, we get to make good music and uh, get to play great music. I don't really know if I have one particular event. I will tell you that one of the things that's really happened recently is when I had my 25th anniversary, mm -hmm. And Ziola strongly encouraged me to have some sort of uh, alumni event. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I thought, you know, that, that'll be fun. And Ann, how many people do you think will come? And she yeah. said, you know, if you have 30 people, it will be really successful. Well, we had 85 alumni wow. come back to play in a band. And because I only thought we'd had 30, I put the Doan band with them. We had 140 people playing wow. on the stage in Heckman wow. and playing music that I played when I first arrived here at uh, Doan University. And so uh, I, I think that might have been something that was particularly meaningful to me. Yeah. But really, every band is meaningful. And it's like football in that every band has its own personality. Yeah. Because everybody's personality works together in it. Yeah. And so some of them are very, very strong personalities. Mm -hmm. 
And some of them are, are more reserved in their personality, but always enjoyable, right. always fun to be with. Yeah. Uh, just a great group of people. That, that's amazing. I think that speaks to um, a big reason why you've, you've stayed at Doan for 27 years. It speaks to just the relationships we build here, which is the staple of a small private liberal arts education and school, right? We're all part of this big family. When you see someone, I know I was out a few years ago, I was back home at my aunt's church. I didn't know anybody and I had a Doan shirt on and my aunt sings in the choir and there was a gentleman next to her who goes, hey, did you go to Doan? And I go, yeah, I sure did. He goes, I graduated in 1974. I went to Doan. I go, what? You're, how, wait, what? And it just kind of opened my mind up when I was a sophomore that we're all interconnected, um, talented young individuals all here and then, you know, when you look back and you see an opportunity to celebrate Dr. Gilbert's 25th year and you know you only thought 30 people were gonna come and turns out 80 people showed up 80 people you had an impact on who said yes I'm gonna come and celebrate that moment and I think we all have as Don as as a Don alum um, I think I think we all have those professors those those people who kind of touched us um, left the left an imprint in our lives at this, this location, this school, um, that we'd gladly come back and celebrate. So I'm glad that there was 80 people and probably many more who just didn't get an opportunity to come back that you've, continue, that you've had a chance to leave an imprint on and continue to, uh, I hope, for 27 more years. Well, thank you. Yes. So. And we'll make that trip to uh, Washington. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I know that, you know, the next time, once all this shakes out, you guys go to Washington, put that concert on. I will be there. I love following around. I usually follow the choir tour as well. I follow the choir tour. Well, yeah. that was part of the choir tour, was it not? Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. Well, um, Kurt and I, we tour separately. Oh, okay. Dr. Okay. Runestad's choirs are so great. Right. Just... Just as an aside, he ran into my high school band director in Florida wow. at a choir concert. He sent me a picture of it, but wow. uh, the choir is well known around the United States. Yeah. Uh, just a just a, an amazing ensemble. Definitely, definitely. Well, now it's time to move on to um, our favorite part of the show. Uh, this is the part you could not prepare for. Um, our live five questions, right? These are five questions completely uh, off the top of your head, the answers, um, and it really gives us a look into your personality, right? So here we go. What you all been waiting for? Question one. With all you know now, what advice would you give to your college self? Well, that is a very, <laughs> very good question. I, if I had to live my college time over again, uh, I was kind of a wild marching band child, right? I played, the, I played drums. Oh, yeah. Right. I think I would have uh, done a little more work in taking my studies a little more seriously. Yeah. Um, I, I was able to get into Northwestern. Yeah. And uh, when I got into Northwestern, uh, because I was paying for it myself, I was a good student. <laughs> but uh, in my undergrad, uh, Madison was uh, a wild place. And... Um, <laughs> I, 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 one thing, I, if I was going to give some student an advice, particularly this year, mm. it would be to buy a planner mm. and schedule everything. Yeah. Because we do not know from week to week what is going to happen. Mm. And it is going to be challenging to keep track. In fact, Kenley, you started this out by saying, you know, we need to be flexible. Mm. Well, we need to be flexible, but we also need to be <clears throat> totally understanding mm. that things are changing maybe even on a daily basis. Right. And so you've just got to be able to keep track of what you're doing and spend, mark down when you're going to study right. and, and what you are going to study right. and then study it. it. <laughs> you guys heard it here first, especially all incoming students. That was a great piece of advice what Dr. Gilbert just said. Plan your time out, know what you're going to do, and then do it. That was a, that right there, that was a secret to success that wasn't really a secret, but still. That was great. Um, question two. Okay, so I will start this question off by saying stop day. Okay, and if you guys don't know what stop day is, stop day is, uh, it's like Christmas. It's like Doan Christmas here. Uh, it happens in the spring. 
Uh, it is a day when, <clears throat> exactly how it sounds, everything stops um, randomly. It's kind of um, a relief from the pressure of the spring semester uh, because everything is accelerated in the spring semester because you throw in spring break and um, just a bunch of other things. It's a shorter semester, finals, midterms, closing out, graduation, all that stuff. It's a, it's a day where everything stops and there's games and fun on campus. Okay, with that being said, now that we know what stop day is, what is one aspect of your day that if you could, you would stop? Hmm. Well, I'll probably offend someone with this answer, <laughs> but I am glad that we don't have committee work on yeah. stop day. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, um, you know, I, I like stop day, and, and I, know, I know there are uh, faculty members who do not like stop day, in part because, as you know, the anticipation for stop day, oh, yeah. you hit the nail on the head. It's just like Christmas yes. for some of the students. And when it's not coming, they're like, you know, they, they get, there's angst over it. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> what I like about stop day for me personally is that because everything stops on campus, I can catch up for a day. Mm. I, can, I can do those things that I've needed to do, but they're on the back burner that I have to get done. Right. And so I'm not encumbered usually with any meetings right. or any, any uh, plans that I have other than maybe getting some instruments fixed or, or um, getting some music taken care right. of or, or paying some bills or something, yeah. something mundane. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's, that's one of the better answers we've had, I think. Uh, so, question three. Okay, so as you know, we are at a school of, uh, an institution of higher learning, and with that comes excuses, because students. Students love, I mean, it's just part of it, right? They're trying to juggle this and that and this and that, and sometimes the best thing they can do is come up with an excuse as to why something didn't happen or they didn't show up somewhere. I think we've all had those, right? So, What's the worst excuse you've ever heard from a student or a coworker? Uh, okay. Well, I think I think the excuse that always sticks out in my mind, the one that uh, I felt uh, I turned a corner in terms of my maturity in teaching, hmm. happened maybe fifteen years ago now, may, maybe twenty years ago now, early two thousands. Yeah. I had a student who did not show up for a concert, and they had a solo. And so on Monday, I called the student in. Now, in my old days, I would have been drill sergeant. Yeah. You know, uh, think of that, the guy that does the drill sergeant therapist in the commercials. <laughs> yeah. Right? I would have been like that. But um, this, this young man came into my office, and I said, so, uh, where where were you for the concert? He goes, yeah, I missed it. Yeah, I, I know you missed it. And uh, <laughs> to make a long story short, he went to his fraternity party. Oh, no. And he'd had too much to drink. <laughs> and his fraternity friend said, ah, just skip it. No. So he did. <laughs> so I said, well, OK. Um, because I appreciate your being honest. I mean, he didn't lie. Yeah. And I said, so I don't know what you're expecting, but because of that, I'm going to pull your scholarship. Well, he was not expecting that. Right. He was expecting to fail, but he wasn't expecting to get his scholarship pulled. Yeah. So I said, we're, not, we're done talking, so we'll see you. Yeah. You don't have to show up for anything else. Yeah. The next day he came back, he had talked to his dad. Dr. Gilbert, is there any, is there any way I can get my scholarship back? And I said, yep, there is a way. You have to talk to the whole band and tell him what you did. <laughs> so he stood up in front of the whole band and told him exactly what he did. He broke down. He was crying. And the band, being the gracious, wonderful people they are, told me to forgive him. And I said, I'm not, I can't completely forgive him. So here's what I'm going to do. So I said, look, you come to band next year, no scholarship money. But if you are faithful, you will get your scholarship back. Yeah. So about the next day, I got a call from his father. His dad was livid. Why are you giving me a scholarship back? What lesson did you teach him? And I said, well, I hear what you're saying, sir, but let me just say that, you know, a young person can make a mistake yeah. and try to recover from it. Right. So he's not getting off free. If, he, if he's gone for a year, yeah. then 
Then he said, okay, I, I can buy that, but um, if I were you, I would have thrown him out. <laughs> and so um, anyway, he was perfect the next right. year, and his senior year, he got a scholarship back. Well, there you go. And so, uh, you know, sometimes things work out no. like that. <laughs> so when you ask what the worst excuse was, no excuse. Yeah. No excuse. You could have came up with a better one. <laughs> yeah, could you just say, God, I'm sorry I was so <laughs> ill, and I'm sorry I couldn't call you, but... Right, but no, nah, I was doing this, and sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I think you learned a valuable lesson in decision making. You know, we could hope. I mean, we could hope, right? right. Uh, every 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 action has a consequence, right? Um, that that was great. Okay, so question four. Uh, again, an institution of higher learning. I'd like to think uh, the majority of us are lifelong learners. I like to consider myself as such. So, what is the last thing you've learned? Hmm. Oh, you mean like, what is the actual last thing I learned? Yeah. Okay, well, I've been doing some research for the concert we're going to play. Yeah. Because I've been thinking about what music we should play and what mm -hmm. might be meaningful for the students. Yeah. I'm thinking about opening our concert. Now, don't hold me to this because yeah. the piece is challenging. Yeah. But I'm thinking about playing Aaron Copeland's Outdoor Overture. Hmm. He wrote this in 1942 as part of his Music for Use plan. And I knew this because I'd played that piece before. Hmm. But I was also thinking about uh, the recent uh, uh, passing of John Lewis. Hmm. And uh, I was a little kid yeah. in that civil rights movement. Yeah. And I was thinking about playing, I have played this piece with the band before, and I either I'm going to do it or another piece by uh, an African-American composer. Hmm. But Charles Albert Tindley, hmm. uh, a, a pastor in Philadelphia, yeah wrote a piece called We Shall Overcome Someday, yeah. a very famous uh, hymn. Mm -hmm. And that hymn became the anthem of the Civil Rights Absolutely. Movement. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a very beautiful setting of the piece. It starts out with the sort of tragedy, mm -hmm. the sort of um, angst that we have in this, and then breaks into the beautiful tune. Mm. And so I thought I would play that hmm. as uh, sort of my, my tribute to John Lewis, but yeah. also uh, to remind us that... Uh, there are still things that we need to overcome. Yeah, yeah. That would. Oh, I. I know we can't hold you to it, but that would be. That, well, would that be piece, great. I think we can play. play. Okay. Or we're going to play another piece. I'm thinking about yeah. is a piece by a young. I think he's 25. Wow. Omar Thomas. Okay. He's an African American jazz composer. Okay. That wrote a piece called Sharp Nine. Huh. And it's an improvisatory piece for the band. Yeah. The problem I have, Kenley, is spreading the band out so far. Yeah. Will we be able technically to play the music? Uh, Overcome we can play, yeah. but I don't know about Copeland's uh, Outdoor oh, Overture. Sure. We'll have to see. Yeah. Well, we're excited to hear that. Whichever uh, music we, you decide to play, I know we're all excited to hear it. You know, I have another piece of advice, if I could just offer. Yeah. That I think another thing that I hope every student comes away from Doan, learning at Doan, is that if I could live my life over, I would try to read more every day. Mm. Just read a lot. Yep. Read. Yes. And, and try to get as much from reading mm. as I possibly can. Mm. We're a culture that watches people talk like we're right. doing now. Right. But reading somehow really exercises the mind in a much deeper way. Definitely. Definitely. Not every reader is a leader, but every leader is definitely a reader. Excellent advice. Yes. That's, that's something I've, I got away from reading, I think, after school. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I just didn't want to read anymore. I, I was a political science major and a sociology major. Um, no, I was a political science and LPS major. So I felt like I was, I always had my nose in a book reading something and it just felt good for a year to not read. And then, but I realized a year of not reading hurt me more. <laughs> I was, I just felt like, ah, my, 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 I had to flex my brain muscle a little bit. And so I've recently actually gotten back into, um, Picking it back up to now where um, I try at least 15 minutes a day, read something that isn't required. Hmm. Um, at, at least 15 minutes, whether it be a, a leadership book or just for fun, something, you know, maybe it's a, something I didn't know about. Maybe it's an article about something. Right. Try to take mm -hmm. that 15 minutes to just read something that stretches you a little bit. Um, it gets you thinking a little bit different. I think the other day I tried to read something about math. I just didn't understand it. Um, I tried though, I did. So on to our fifth question. Um, I love this question because everyone has uh, their own spot, but what is your favorite spot on Doan's 
300 scenic acres of beautiful campus. I have two favorite spots, really. Like most people do. So Heckman Auditorium. Okay. I've spent a lot of time <laughs> in that room. Yeah. And it's a good sounding room. It, uh, if, if, if you sit towards the back of the yeah. concert hall, that's where you're going to get the best sound, the best blend of the sound mm. from those panels you know, that hang down yeah. in, that, in that hall. You being a football player, I've been in that room many times. I, I wasn't a football player. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrestler. Wrestling. And speech. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, uh, that room is a beautiful, yes. beautiful place to play. Yeah. Uh, but I've been riding my bike through the campus. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of dangerous. I have to be a little careful. But coming down the path along the Doan Pond yeah. and driving along the pond and, and seeing people there. Some people are yeah. fishing and yeah. other people, people are doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And riding up the hill to the, uh, by the Castle Outdoor Theater yeah. and then on the sidewalk across in the front and then out the, that is a very beautiful drive every yeah. day. And on a hot day, you come down into that little valley there and it's cool yeah. and it's just a beautiful scene. Definitely, definitely. My favorite two spots, the conservatory and the lower level of the library. And I say the lower level because there would be times where I was just, I needed to, when I needed to think about something, a lot of argumentative papers, I need to make sure my argument was sound. And so what I would do usually, um, my friends thought I was crazy, but I would just walk and talk to myself. I'd pace and talk to myself. Now what I found is my pacing makes other people nervous, which I don't know how that happens, but so I would go to the lower level where there wasn't anybody and I would pace the bookshelves. And one day, I really got into the habit of it after one day doing this, I would look, I would try to find the oldest book I could find because there's just something that, it gives me goosebumps when I hold a book that is over 100 years old. And I feel like, wow, like this book is very old. I found a science, the oldest one I've found so far in the lower level, a science textbook given to the college by David uh, Brainerd Perry himself in 1873. It's signed, given to the college by David Brainerd Perry, and it was a, uh, a biology textbook. Hmm. And it, I was, I, it just blew my mind that this, it's a piece of history. And it survived, I mean, it, it survived so much. And I really, that's where I would go to think. When I needed to get my brain off whatever I was doing, I would go down to the lower level of the library and just try to find the oldest book I could find. And I'd go find different things and not just say, wow, these, this, is, this is awesome. That's the lower level of the library. Right. So, I yeah. like the lower level of the library too. There's yeah. so much cool stuff to see down there. Oh, there's tons. If you just go down there and look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, um, it seems like we have a couple, not a question, but it's a statement from Logan Williams. Dr. Gilbert is far and away the best thing at Dome. So there you go from our viewers. Well, Logan, the last time I met Logan, he was working for one of the representatives in wow. Washington, D.C. Wow. As an assistant. Whoa. And so uh, I wish Logan the very best. Uh, I hope he's, uh, I, I, I'm not sure I would want to be in Washington, D.C. Right, right now. now. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I hope he's doing well. And his yeah. sister, Monica, came here, too. Yeah. They are wonderful people. So thank you, Logan, for that. Awesome. Well, that seems like all we have today. Dr. Gilbert, thank you again. It was a wonderful uh, time having you on the show. Uh, all you guys watching, thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Uh, my name's Kennerly Benrati. I was here with Dr. Jay Gilbert himself. Um, we'll see you later. Go Tigers.